The following is a Podbeard production. From the deepest bowels of your imagination. Actually, he's from Canada there, bud. From the famed Hotter Show Studios, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are Rolling Audio here today on episode 218 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thanks so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of The Podcast. I have a kick-ass episode for you here today, as I try to do every single week here on The Hotter Show. Now, <laughs> quick disclaimer, uh, this episode is basically the episode you guys should have heard Last week on the show, whereas I am being joined for the very first time in the history of the Hotter Show, all 218 plus episodes of the show, for the very first time, uh, two professional wrestlers. And I'm very, very excited about this. The team of John Kayen and Alexander Cable. Also, some of you may know them as Fear the Beard, but their team name is Kayen and Cable. I did, of course, record an episode with them last week, but unfortunately, due to some just bizarre technical issues, that episode is gone. It has never happened to me before in the history of this podcast, and I'm very embarrassed that it happened, but the guys were gracious enough, even though I did have a few moments in which I did, I will say, upset them with some things that I said, so I was a little more careful this time around. I I was able to, you know, keep, keep them pretty happy. I think for the most part, we have a great chat in which we talk about kind of a little bit about beards, of course, and their new love of mean beard, the uh, great product that they actually have been starting to use now, so I'm very excited about that. We also talk about their start in wrestling. When they started watching it, their training, their, when they started becoming a tag team, the tactics that they use, and there's always some fun of the little tangents in there. It's definitely a great chat that I know if you guys are a fan of k and Cable, you're going to absolutely enjoy this chat because we cover a lot of ground. And also, of course, uh, you know, there are a couple moments in which, you know, they may or may not have kind of poke fun at your boy a little bit, but that's okay. I may or may not have made myself an easy target a couple of times during this chat, but it was a lot of fun. And, you know, those are two absolute genuine badasses, ladies and gentlemen. So you're definitely going to enjoy the chat. Before we get into that, though, I got to take a quick second to give a big shout out to my friends over at Seat Giant. If you guys are not aware of who Seat Giant are, they are a ticket resale website that offers tickets for all kinds of events, ranging from concerts, sporting events, family events, theater events, anything you can imagine. They have your hookup. Super easy to use website. Their interface is so clear, even I can figure it out. That's right, even I can figure it out. And I get lost just going from one end of my apartment to the other sometimes, folks. Go on the website, search for the event of your choosing. It is a super easy to read map. Diff- all the different prices for the tickets are laid out very clearly. There's no hidden fees or any of that kind of bull crap. You do not have to worry. Seat Giant has your back. They know how much these events mean to you, and they want you to enjoy yourself without having to have any concerns. The maps even actually have this little nice feature where they actually light up, showing exactly where you are sitting. So again, it is foolproof. There's going to be no issue whether you want to sit up in the nosebleeds and just be at the event to experience it or you want to sit right front row center for whatever the event is they got you covered tons of different great great pricing and they also come with a full money back guarantee if there are any issues for example if your ticket happens to not work for some bizarre reason you will get your money back as long as you can provide some kind of information from the venue that the ticket did not work. As someone who has been in that situation, let me tell you, that is a huge, huge bonus. And on top of that, you're looking for something even better? Well, if you go on seatgiant.ca or .com today, depending on where you are listening to this podcast in the world, and use the coupon code PODBEARD, that is P-O-D-B-E-A-R-D, PODBEARD, all one word, all lowercase, you're going to save yourself a little something extra at checkout, and also it helps out your boy and everybody else at Podbeard Network. So don't wait. Do not hesitate. If there's an event you want to go see, treat yourself and go on Seat Giant today. Because Seat Giant, they just don't sell tickets. They sell experiences. And with that, we're ready to roll into this podcast here with Kane and Cable. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, it's kind of awkward, but uh, last week on the show, I recorded what was a great interview with two of the biggest badasses in professional wrestling and uh, as much as I'm embarrassed to admit due to a uh, unfortunate and unforeseen technical issue uh, that episode has been lost forever and will uh, forever be now called the lost tape but uh, however 
they have been gracious enough to come back for another round here on the Harder Show, and I could not be more thankful. Uh, last time they were here, I, I said a couple things that you know got them a little heated, so I'm gonna really choose my words carefully, and hopefully we can just uh, have a good time here. But I'm very excited to welcome onto the show uh, the very first time ever again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the. Current, the first ever and reigning BCW Tag Team Champions, the team of Kane and Cable. How's it going, boys? Look, let's let's just clear the air right now. Let's okay. get the elephant out of the room. We both know you deleted this interview so that we could start again just because you wanted to talk to us again. I mean, I'm not going to deny the fact that I didn't want to not talk to you guys again, but uh, I, I can assure you that I was extremely upset about about that first episode being lost, but I can I can definitely appreciate your your point of view. I mean, you know, you made some nice gestures here. Uh, you know, we were both. Uh, I don't want to say thankful, but uh, you know, it was very nice of you to send us uh, along some beers for us to enjoy as a bit yes. of a a pardoning here. But uh, I think personally. Uh, you know, me and uh, Cable talked about this earlier, and I think one of the main reasons that we kind of agreed to redo this, uh, the first time we met uh, at the Chinlock event in Kingston, Chinlock 5, uh, you're kind and gracious enough to uh, talk to us about a great beard product, uh, you know, talking about our mean beards and uh, your own. Yes. Uh, so we gave that mean beard product uh, a try, the product arrived, and... Uh, Thankfully, it lived up to your hype, so we, we agreed to, to do this interview again. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, I don't want to thank you because, again, we're here after what was three hours of our time last time, so we have to come back once again. But uh, uh, a great product, so, you know, from one beard to another, we decided to give you a second shot. And I do uh, sincerely appreciate that and, and you know, appreciate the, I, I won't call it forgiveness because I'm, I'm, as you said, you know, I did waste your guys' time last time. I do again apologize about well, that. We'll, we'll but, see uh, how this interview goes to see if you get forgiveness. Okay. I, I And I, I can absolutely understand that and appreciate that. But uh, you, you mentioned that the beard product had arrived. So let, let's, let's talk about beards first and foremost here because... What drew me to you guys right away the first time that I saw you, aside from the fact that you were, you know, two absolute badasses in the ring, was, of course, the fact, number one, the message on the back of your T-shirts, and then also the, you know, absolutely mean beards that are on your faces. So before I talk a little bit about the product and that there, what, um, how long have you guys been growing your beards at now? Have you kind of always had beards since you could grow them, or? I mean, myself personally, uh, I was 15, 16, I think, when I started growing facial hair, you know, properly. And uh, for for a while there, I had a, a long goatee, you know, about uh, being a fan growing up of, you know, and I'm sure we'll get into this later, but, you know, the Heart Foundation, uh, you know, I wanted a big, long goatee. I never went with the point like Anvil, but uh, I had a nice long goatee for many, many years. And then... Uh, I got a job working in the office world before getting into uh, wrestling. And uh, my boss, you know, knew, knowing that I didn't like to shave, kind of told me, you know, as long as you come in and, you know, your cheeks and your neck and everything are cleaned up every Monday, you're, you're good to go. And then I got sick and tired of shaving once a week. So I told him, you know what, I'm just going to grow a beard and uh, give me a couple of weeks to let it all kind of blend in. And that was eight years ago now, I think. And I just haven't looked back. When I was a young man, a dude with a magnificent beard told me that as soon as I could grow a beard, I should grow a beard. I followed that advice, and I've had one ever since. True words have never been spoken. As far as that was a very smart man. Absolutely. As far as uh, true sage advice, I would say that's probably got to rank up there. <laughs> as far as some of the best advice I know I've ever been given, as well, you know from magnificent uh, beardos in the world when they say, you know, man, the second you can grow it, just grow it out. And you guys definitely have the, uh, have the genetics uh, for that. Do you have any idea? Just, I'm just my own curiosity about how long your beards are at this point. I mean, they've got to be at least over the, I would say just looking at you guys, probably the, the three or four inches marked by now, I would have to say. 
Are, are you trying to say that we're only three or four inches? I mean, I you could definitely be longer. I'm I'm horrible with uh, with measurements, so you'll you'll have to forgive me on that. Well, men try and exaggerate on the other end, though. So you know, but anyway, I've got about four or five myself. Uh, and I think I'm sitting right around five the last time I measured it. But, uh, I mean, I know I, I speak for both of us where it's, you know, let's uh, just kind of keep it growing and see where it goes, right? It's, uh, oh, I'm going full ZZ Top. I want to be able to tuck it into my belt. <laughs> You're going to have to tuck it up when you uh, when you get in the ring, too. I'm sure after a while, if it gets too long, you don't want to be tripping over it. Well, the idea is to braid it. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Sometimes for big matches, we braid our hair and stuff, and I think it would be cool if I could braid the beard to match. It's a really popular thing, too, right now, getting the, you know, some guys will nod it or some guys have been doing that, you know, where they just do, like, kind of the big two-strand twist braids. I haven't seen that a lot lately, and it just looks like absolute... Uh, absolute Vikings walking into the ring. So that would definitely look very badass. Hey, so having long beards like that, um, has there been kind of any situations in the ring? I'm sure it's happened before where, you know, your opponents have kind of in a, in a cowardly way used your magnificent beards against you at all. Well, let, let me tell you a story. We were wrestling the, uh, you know, we don't need to name names, but we were wrestling up near Montreal and we had decided that the crowd was not worth our time. So we were just about ready to walk out on the match, take the cat and go back to Ontario. <laughs> and this kid, right, decides he's going to sneak out behind us, grab us by both of our beards, and smash our foreheads together. But the, as if that wasn't bad enough, you then proceed drag us back to the ring. Like, we're still walking. I don't want to say drag. Lead us to the ring. And proceeds to throw me into the ring by my beard, causing me to go all the way through the ring and out the other side. I, I I can't say for certain because there's just so much of it to begin with, but I think he ripped out beard hairs in the process. Oh, jeez. I think he was trying to sell them at the merch table in intermission. <laughs> I, I, I've seen people do that, and they actually sold because there are so many people with beard envy. But, uh, yeah, there, there are people who have sold beard hair that was removed from their opponents at merch tables and people purchased it. So, you know, the, the beard envy is strong out there. It absolutely is. And I mean, spe speaking on that, you guys, obviously your, your fan base with the whole fear, the beard, uh, Monica that you guys have, have, has become something of, you know, I heard rumblings of it even before I was introduced to you guys at that Chinlock show. So, but now I know that the fans kind of, started chanting that at you during one of your matches. But what has that kind of become for you guys at this point? Like when you think of the moniker, we'll call it of Fear the Beard, what do you really want people to think when they hear that name and that tagline? You speak English, right? Yes, sir. It's only three words. This is very true. That was probably a bit of a dumb question. I apologize. But uh, look, Fear the Beard is a lifestyle. It's a battle cry, and it's a warning. <laughs> we live to make people fear the beards. We yell to fear the beard to intimidate our opponents, and our opponents know to be scared of these two bearded badasses. There's nothing more to it than that. And that is literally the, the simplest way that it can be put. Now, of course, obviously, it does say that in your absolute badass theme song, which, uh, by the way, guys, you did hear a part of it in the, uh, the beginning of this episode, coming in from the intro. And I am going to play that song in full at the end of this episode because it is such a, a badass theme. And, and we don't get to hear the full extent of how, just how badass it is when you guys come to the ring. But where did kind of that, that theme song come from? Um, we, we had a bit of a, I don't want to say an original idea because our idea was to kind of get uh, a cover made of sorts. But uh, we reached out to some musician friends that we know, and uh, or originally, um, we, like I said, we wanted a cover done of a song. Um, so we reached out to friends of mine um, that I've known for many years, uh, worked all over in the music industry, uh, a guy by the name of Stanley Kropa and uh, Steve Mitchell. And uh, I actually hope I'm pronouncing his name right, because I'll be honest, I've never actually heard his last name pronounced. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, 
and Cable had a bit of a, a great idea for, you know, a, a different twist on a song, and we gave them that, and, uh, you know, they, they kind of ran with it and gave us something completely original. And it's definitely a very unique and original song, and I mean, the, the second I heard that, the second the drums kick in and that bass drum hits, it's like, man, it's, it is absolutely on. And you guys come to the ring. It's definitely a, a super intimidating thing to see. So you mentioned a little bit earlier about getting that mean beer product. So just, just real quick, what exactly did you guys get? I know for sure that you did get the, uh, the mean whip, but what else did you get with that, uh, that package? Uh, they had a, uh, a father's day special going on last week. Um, and, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't remember exactly what was in it. Um, I'll pull up my receipt here while I have you on the phone, and I'll be able to check that because it's upstairs in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um, But it had the mean whip. It had the beard oil, um, and there was something else in uh, there. And the bomb. Yes, that's it. It was the bomb as well. I haven't tried the bomb yet. Um, As I mentioned to you off air, I... uh, Knowing that this product was on its way, I really wanted to kind of give it a test. And, uh, you know, so other than my, my usual, you know, washing and shower and whatnot, um, I didn't put any oil, any bombs or anything in it for the last week or so. Um, and then got it here. And I just, I, so far, I've, you know, I, I tried the, the beard oil on my hands just quickly to see how it felt, you know, wasn't too oily or anything like that. Um, but then I gave the Mean Whip a try and, you know, it literally undid a week worth of, you know, purposeful neglect, uh, you know, right away. So uh, uh, I'll give the beard oil and the bomb a try tomorrow, but uh, highly recommend that Mean Whip to anyone out there. And the best part about the Mean Whip is how quick it is. It doesn't take a lot of preparation time. You can put it on just before you go out, just before you go out to the ring, and you're ready to go. <laughs> Oh, for sure. And I mean, with that, uh, you know, like you guys had mentioned to me before about the fact that, you know, if you were to put on beard oil right before heading into the ring, you know, that can, you know, be a bit of an issue if you're trying to, you know, maybe get a hold on somebody and your, and your beard's a little, uh, little too oily and it can, it can kind of cause some problems for you. So that's definitely good to hear that you're enjoying the meme with and, uh, you know, big shout outs to Mean Beard, the best beard care in the entire world. But talking on beards and that, is there any other bearded wrestlers in the area that's, uh, or, or just even that you guys know at all that you think people should kind of keep an eye out on right now? Well, right off the bat, you, gotta, you can't talk about bearded wrestlers without talking about TDT, Tabernacle Team, uh, you know, located in the Montreal area, but they travel all over the place kicking ass. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, especially you know another bearded tag team. So we'd be we'd be remiss to not mention them. Uh, I mean, one that stands out for me, especially from once I started looking at what was going on on the indie scene out here, kind of caught my eye. You know, very similar look to us. You know, with big beard and tattoos and long hair, uh, would be uh, Suicide Jesus, Justin Turnbull. Um, you know, he's uh, not the biggest guy in the world, but uh, you know, I, I I can honestly say, you know, and I don't uh, I don't stand down from too many challenges, but uh, having seen that guy and uh, the the way he moves around that ring, he's uh, he's opponent that I'm I'm glad I haven't had to step across the ring from yet. And that's definitely high praise coming from you, from someone who you know. I- I couldn't imagine you back in nine from anybody being, you know, the the ultimate badass that you are. Well, we're we're both we're both fans of uh, of certain wrestlers, so we we kind of take a little bit of that danger and, I guess, for lack of better terms, lack of self preservation. <laughs> I was going to say total disregard for your own body, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to throw myself that that far down, but yeah, that's that's about right. You know, uh, we we both kind of take that same approach to wrestling. You know, whatever it takes to to get the win, and it, uh, I, at times I think he might take that to uh, a, le- a level that I don't. So, yeah, Justin Turnbull is definitely uh, one that you should keep your eye out for. I'll throw one out that uh, you know he he hasn't quite made his spot yet out on the scene i've uh i've seen him doing some training cable's gotten a, a much closer eye on him than i have um you know so i can't i can't say too much but you know you'll you'll eventually see a wrestler coming out by the name of Derek butler that uh 
has himself a mean beard, and uh, you should be watching out for. Kind of a kind of like a bearded grizzly bear. Oh, geez, okay. Definitely yeah, sounds like it. something to watch for. Yeah. <laughs> So talking about beards and talking a little bit about other wrestlers in the area, I want to ask you guys a little bit about kind of your start in wrestling and kind of where it all started for you guys. How exactly did you both get introduced to professional wrestling? Uh, being the older one of the two, my storyline goes a little bit further back, so I guess it makes sense that I would start. Um, I grew up um, spending a lot of time at my grandparents' house. And uh, my uncle lived there at the time. And he was a big wrestling fan. Um, so every time that I was there on the weekends, you know, on Saturday morning, Sunday morning, there was always wrestling on TV. Um, so I kind of gravitated towards it as a kid. Um, you know, if I didn't want to eat anything as a child, you know, all my grandmother had to tell me was, you know, pick a wrestler at the time. You know, Hulk Hogan eats this, and I would shovel it down. Um, so, you know, I was a fan from... I could easily say age three or four. Um, and then I kept watching until, you know, 2001, 2002, when the first brand split happened. Um, and then it just kind of felt like you had to watch too much to keep in on it. And at that point, you know, I was also 18, 19. So kind of had other things on my mind at the time. Uh, so it took a few years off from watching at that point and then just kind of dove right back into it and, I haven't stopped. Yeah, for sure. Especially at that age and that time period, you know, it was getting to be there. It was getting to be a, a lot of wrestling. I mean, obviously right now with, you know, even just speaking on WWE's product, there is so much wrestling to watch. So I can for sure uh, get your point there. I think, I think the difference now for, for someone, you know, at, of that age, um, you know, having the network, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, there, there's other means of being able to watch the stuff online that we won't get into, but you know, having that access online now, um, I think changes things as well. You know, you don't necessarily have to be watching, you know, and I think what did it for me was, you know, SmackDown went to Friday, you yeah. know, at 18, 19, do you want to be sitting at home watching wrestling on a no. Friday night? So, you know, but now they could watch it on the network, you know, on Thursday, the next or Tuesday, Wednesday, the next week, or, you know, whatever, um, and work around your schedule. So, there's a lot more content, but it's a different time. Oh, definitely. It's definitely way more accessible now than it ever has been. And it's only for the betterment, for sure. So how about you, Cable? How did you get started with wrestling? Well, ironically, it was SmackDown moving to Friday night that led to me watching <laughs> wrestling for the first time. Um, <clears throat> I was in the eighth grade. So however, however old you are when you're in eighth grade, I don't remember. And I just made some new friends. Yeah, the, in, in and about there. I just made some new friends, and we were going to uh, get together and hang out on a Friday night. And uh, they said, if we're hanging out on a Friday night, you got to watch SmackDown with us. And I was like, oh, my God, you watch wrestling? <laughs> so we hung out, and we watched SmackDown, and I didn't understand what I was watching. I mean, I, was, I wouldn't say I was bored, but I just wasn't captivated by it. But then I was talking to one of my other buddies, and he's like, oh, man. You watch wrestling, you should try the video games. The video games are great. So we hung out and we played SmackDown vs. Raw, and I was actually having fun with it. There were fun games back then. Um, and then I was hanging out with the previous friends again on a Friday night, and we were watching SmackDown again, and I was like, hey, wait a second. I recognize some of these characters from the video game. And that kind of piqued my interest. And then I saw this guy named Jeff Hardy, and he was a badass, and that uh, kind of he was the one that got me in hooked on it and then the undertaker came back and that was a big thing too because i actually knew who he was even before i watched wrestling and uh yeah just the more i hung out with those guys i would watch more and more wrestling and then all of a sudden even when i wasn't hanging out with them i'd still be tuning in on friday nights and the rest is history definitely two you know very polarizing figures in the wrestling business i mean the undertaker what what can be said about him that hasn't already been said before i mean he's He's the phenom. He's considered, you know, when you talk about some of the greatest of all time, you know, he's got to be in at least the top five, some would say. Um, and then, of course, obviously, Jeff Hardy. You know, what's not to <laughs> what's not to like about Jeff Hardy, especially around <laughs> that age group? He was such a unique individual. And it's it's funny how, and I remember this from this talking before, we, we have kind of such a similar way that we got in into, uh, into wrestling. So as far as... Um, 
with that now, obviously, KB, you just mentioned a, a couple guys that kind of your favorites. But for you, John, was there kind of a couple of wrestlers that you found yourself always kind of really w- paying attention to when they came out? Was there any that kind of caught your eye a little bit more than the others? Um, I was also a fan of the Hardy Boys when, you know, that time came around. But if I go back to, to when I started watching wrestling, um, when I was really young, I mean, I was definitely, you know, I was a Hulk Hogan fan, a Macho Man fan, an Ultimate Warrior fan. Um, you know, you're kind of at that age where you're just, you're, you're cheering for the big good guys and, you know, whoever the, they're pushing and showing you is the, the hero is who you're both, you know, is who you're rooting for. Um, I, and I started to get a little bit older and this and that, you know, I, I became a fan of the Heart Foundation. Uh, that's kind of when I started to, to kind of fall in love with tag team wrestling. Uh, you know, you had, you know, your, your Legion of Doom, Road Warriors, depending where you were watching them. Um, you know, as I said before, you know, the Hart Foundation, you had the British Bulldogs, uh, you had know, the Rockers, you know, like so many great tag teams. And then I didn't really get into the, the WCW and NWA side of things until I was a little bit older. Um, but, you know, Four Horsemen. Um, then as I kind of got into my teenage years, that's when I started getting into more of, you know, your, your Edging Christians, your Hardy Boys, your Dudley Boys, um, you know, let, what, what hasn't already been said about their matches. Um, but I mean, on more of the, the character side of things, um, I kind of really gravitated towards Cactus Jack, um, and, you know, later on as Mankind and occasionally Dude Love, um, guys like, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts was one that really kind of caused me to shift away from who they're portraying as the, the big star, you know, away from your Hulk Hogan and your, your Ultimate Warriors and your Macho Man. Um. Jake the Steak was really kind of the first one to take me outside that mold and where I really kind of paid attention to, you know, the, the promos and the, the way, the way they wrestled, the way they captivated the crowd. And, you know, when, when Jake Roberts was on TV, you always were, were transfixed. You were glued to the screen. So, um, those are probably some of my, my bigger influences would be, you know, you Cactus Jackson and Jake Roberts, definitely big Hardy boys fan. Um, and if you watch the way I wrestle, you'll probably see some of that in there as well. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see see a little bit of, uh, of of cactus in there for sure. With as you know yourself and Cable mentioned earlier that you know a little bit of uh, I guess for lack of a better term, we'll say that self preservation. <laughs> you know, throwing yourself at your opponent and and things of that nature. Because he was someone who you know, I mean, what hasn't been said about Mick Foley, but you know, he's such a an important figure in wrestling when you look at what he has accomplished and what he did for the business. And I mean, he's a part of whether people will admit it or not, one of the most well-known moments in wrestling history, him coming off that hell in the cell, you know, that was such a, such an iconic moment that no matter what happens and he, you know, he did a whole tour about it. We talked about it, you know, that, that moment and how, He's he says it all he says it all the time where he's destined to relive that moment <laughs> every day, you know, for the rest of his life. Just just on that note, really quick, do you remember? Because that was right around the time you were watching. If, if I am getting my my dates uh, correct I was, here, I was watching it live uh, when it happened. Oh wow! And I, I remember just being in shock. Um, I I watched it, and you know, J- Jim Ross basically summed it up. You know what I mean? Like I I thought he was broken in half. You know, I I thought he was dead. Um, you know, and then the camera kind of pans, uh, and you kind of see him start to move. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, he's, he, he survived it. Um, and then he got off the stretcher and started climbing the cage again. And, you know, that's kind of when I realized, you know, there's, there's a certain point that he's willing to go to that most people aren't. And, uh, you know, that's. I, I, I knew it before having seen Cactus Jack matches and so on and so forth, but that kind of took it to a whole new level of, you know, oh, so that's where we're going now. Um, was it the smartest decision he's ever made? Probably not. <laughs> but, you know, it, uh, as you said, you know, it's one of those iconic moments that people will remember for years to come. And whether that's necessarily a, a good thing or a bad thing, you know, who's to say, but... Um, it's definitely something that I remember. So, Oh, absolutely. And, and again, just quickly on that note, he talks a lot about that second fall 
that he had and how, you know, people who have been in a wrestling ring and who have, you know, been slammed on the mat can truly are the only ones you can really truly appreciate that fall because of just, you know, a lot of people think of a wrestling ring and they're like, Oh, it's like a trampoline. <laughs> and it's like, no man, it is a, it is a mat. It is a, there was wood there. There is, there is not as much give as people may think in a wrestling, uh, in a wrestling ring. It, it's wood and steel. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, get the metal in there too, because the metal hurts. Yes, <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> and it, it, it's not just when you get bumped on the apron, you know, the, the hardest part of the ring, as they, as they love to tell us, you know, it, it all hurts. It's, it, do you get used to certain bumps? Yeah. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. You oh, know, sure. I mean, I still, I still walk out of every single match, you know, just, oh, you know, that hurt. But, you know. Uh, it, it hurts a little less each time, maybe, <laughs> until you get to a point where it just starts hurting more and more each time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a break-even point where killing nerve gives way to doing real damage. I, but I we haven't hit it yet. <laughs> oh, uh, there, there, there's sometimes. I mean, that that match with uh, that that triple threat tag match that we did, I, I definitely felt it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can imagine. I mean, I've I've heard. You know, in, in certain podcasts and that, that, you know, wrestlers sometimes will talk about the, you know, building up a quote unquote callus, so to speak. With Oka- I think they call it a rope callus or something where, you know, even hitting the ropes, you know, that was one thing that my friend who's training right now said to me. He said, man, I, I could never have been prepared for how much hitting the ropes, like for the first time would kind of be like, oh, that hurt. Why did that hurt? Like, you know, yeah, it's like the- hitting a brick wall, but mm-hmm. in three tiny spots on your back. <laughs> Oh, for sure, and it's, and it's something I know. I know for myself, for. Uh, going back to you know when I was eighteen, nineteen, I, I had actually trained back then for one day. Uh, you know, a friend of mine won some tickets to to go and train um, at uh, Tiger Jeet Singh Training School in the Toronto area, and you know they they, they take you through your basic tumbling and this and that. And we, we finished the class early, and they turned to us. They're like, is there anything that you want to do? And, of course, as a wrestling fan, you know, you play around with your friends. The only thing you can ever do is run the ropes. Well, they, they expected that answer because it's what everybody wants to do. So every single student in the class was watching as me and my stupid friend run the ropes as hard <laughs> as we can, not knowing what we're doing, and then fall to our knees in pain. So... For, for anyone out there that thinks, you know, it's, oh, yeah, you know, it's nice and soft, it's, it, no. That, that, you know, high tensile aircraft steel cable wrapped in hard rubber. If you're lucky, it's wrapped in tape. So. Yeah, it's always one of those things that's always been, uh, you know, a, as a, you know, lifelong fan of, <clears throat> excuse me, of pro wrestling or sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it. Anytime someone uses that, you know, that F word, uh, it's like, man, you don't know in, unless you've been in there. And I'm not going to pretend to say, oh, I know because I've been in there because I've never have been. But I can only imagine, you know, how it would feel. So I'm, I'm glad you guys kind of um, touched on that a little bit. But you started talking a little bit about kind of when you got into wrestling and how you kind of had that little uh, stint there in the beginning, John. But bef- before we move on to that, I want to just ask real quick when did you guys kind of first get introduced to independent wrestling? And is that kind of where you really started to want to get into training or did it start before that for the both of you? Well, so I was on a vacation in Cuba and, uh, the first night we got there, my family was kind of, you know, jet lagged and stuff. So they wanted to take it easy. And I said, screw that. I want to hang out at the bar. So I was hanging out at the bar and this gentleman came up and sat down next to me and we struck up a conversation. Turns out he's also, from Ottawa, where I was living at the time, and um, yeah, and we started talking about wrestling, and turns out he was a huge wrestling fan, and I was like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool to be a wrestler, and he's like, well, I know the guy that runs the big show in Ottawa, do you want me to introduce you? And I was like, what are the odds of this? That's crazy. <laughs> and I kind of thought it was one of those things where you're on vacation, you say some stuff, and it never really pans out, but then I got home, and I got a Facebook message from the guy. And he put me in a group chat with him, and I bugged him uh, a whole bunch of times asking silly questions. And then uh, the promoter offered me the chance to come and work at one of his shows, and then the rest is history. And But, like, right away I knew that that was something I wanted to do because 
wanting to be a wrestler is how I got into indie wrestling. So, And for myself, I mean, I got into indie wrestling, I was maybe 15, 16. Um, and a friend of mine's parents, um, you know, kind of started showing us, you know, ECW. And, uh, you know, that's where I found Cactus Jack and so on. And there was a show going on in Toronto. And they bought tickets and they invited me to come. And the main event of the show was Terry Funk versus Abdullah the Butcher in an ODQ match. And so that was kind of my introduction to indie wrestling. Um, Definitely a hell so, of an introduction. <laughs> yeah. After that, I kind of took a little bit of a break. You know, I hadn't gone to too many indie shows. Um, you know, I think the next wrestling show that I saw after that was WrestleMania 18. Um and then after that, I don't think that I went to a wrestling show for several years. Um, and then just kind of got back into it, you know, once the internet started picking up and, you know, I started seeing more of what was out there and, uh, you know, kind of like cable, you know, kind of went out and saw a show somewhere and, you know, kind of never looked back. That's awesome. Well, I definitely wanted talk to you guys a little bit about kind of your training and how you guys met up and kind of your tag team career thus far. But uh, before we do, I actually just got to take a quick second here to go uh, grab myself another beer and uh, take a quick ad break here. I hope that you guys are also enjoying that, uh, you know, that, that nice case of banquet <laughs> that I, uh, I sent over for you guys. It is much appreciated. And uh, we're very happy that uh, you're sitting there having some banquets with us. Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, I, I was. My, unfortunately, I'm out of banquet, so I'm gonna have to switch to Labatt Blue. But uh, I definitely am a big fan of the uh, of the banquet. Well, that's definitely a downgrade. You, you, oh, you were doing so well there for the first little bit. Yeah. Uh, We'll be back. Oh, definitely an, an awkward moment there. I was not expecting uh, that, that, that to take the turn that it did, but you know, I, I guess I should know better than to not drink Chorus Banquet with uh, Kane and Cable. But uh, what you should absolutely know better than is to use any other design services than my man Jason Reese at Jaber Digital Arts. If you are in need of logos, business stationery, mailers, fine art, brochures, album artwork, literally anything you can think of, even t-shirts, he has got you covered and he's going to do it at a spectacular price and he's going to do it quickly. I swear to God, sometimes this guy does not sleep. He will get stuff off so quickly. Jason has been with me pretty much from day one, and he's done so much for the show. I truly believe I would not be where I am without him. And don't just take my word for it. Go on his Facebook and see all the wonderful things that people say about him. He's done work with Chinlock Wrestling. He's done work with House of Hardcore. And so many bands like my boys in Valier. If you want to get a look at some of his work, check him out on Facebook. It's Jaybird Digital Arts. That's J-A-Y-B-I-D Digital Arts. Or you can also check him out on the web at jaybirddigitalarts.com. Again, that is J-A-Y-B-I-R-D digitalarts.com. Hit him up today and be sure to let him know that your boy Hada sent you. And he'll even give you even more of a better price, a little discount ski, just for listeners of the Hada Show. Jaybird Digital Arts is going to hook you up and have you looking great at a great price. And now back to my chat with KN and Cable. So uh, we're back here again with uh, Kane and Cable. And I have, uh, unfortunately, I am drinking a, a Labatt Blue. I do apologize, gentlemen, for the, uh, the transgressions on that. I will definitely have to make sure it does not happen again if we ever are to. Uh, break bread, but I do hope you are enjoying those chorus banquets that I that I did send over. I was, and then now I know that you're drinking Labatt Blue. Well, if I'm being honest, it's it's a very unpleasant experience. So it's almost that I'm like I'm punishing myself at this point, if if that uh, is any indication. I think that knowledge actually makes this course banquet taste better. Well, that, that's you don't get that one. Well, that's what I was hoping for. So hopefully we can. Uh, just kind of, uh, you know, ho- hopefully move on a little. Because I'm, I'm very curious. We got talking before we took our break here about kind of you guys starting to get into a little bit of training and a little bit of getting into the business. So I'm curious, when was it exactly that you guys both started training and where exactly was that training taking place? I started training in June of 2016. 
at uh, Torture Chamber Pro Wrestling Dojo in Montreal. Uh, I had met, just prior to that, uh, uh, I had met somebody at a house party that also wanted to be a wrestler, and their the options locally were quite limited, and he's like, hey, you want to do this crazy thing with me, and we'll drive to Montreal and back you know, a few times a week and be wrestlers. And I said, that sounds like way too much fun. So I did. And the rest is history. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I started uh, in September of 2016, a few months after him. Um, and for me, it was just kind of, it was a bit of a spur-of-the-moment decision, to be honest. Um, I had listened to Kevin Owens uh, on the Chris Jericho podcast, and he talked about, you know, getting ready for his WWE tryout and how he went to the Torture Chamber Pro Wrestling Dojo and trained Drew Onyx. And... You know, he said if it wasn't for that school and, you know, doing exactly what the students do, you know, he didn't get any special treatment. He just followed the course. And he said if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have had the WWE tryout. So I sent Drew Onyx a message and uh, he told me to come in, take a look at everything. Uh, A couple of days later, I did. Um, You know, I hadn't done any athletics in my life. Um, So, you know, my plan was, you know, I'll go in and see it and start in a few months. And there was a couple of other guys there that were checking the place out. And at the end of the, the practice, you know, Drew asked everybody when they were willing to start. Everybody else said right away. So I just said, you know what, let's do it. And I haven't looked back since. That's definitely a, a badass story for the both of you. As far as at the Torch Chamber, kind of what, how exactly would you say the training is? Like, what is it that you guys really focused on in the beginning and then also kind of nearing the end? Well, the big thing is conditioning. And uh, similar to John, I had also done zero athletic things my entire life up to this point. So it was a jumping right into the deep end, trying to keep up. And uh, so we pushed through the conditioning. And then after the conditioning, uh, I'll let John tell you a little bit more about what went on. I mean, you kind of start, you know, right from your basics, you know, learning how to bump and protect yourself, you know, learning how to roll. learning, you know, your, your collar and elbow tie-ups um, and just repetition and repetition and making sure that it becomes second nature to you, so doing it in a safe manner, um, not just for yourself, but for your opponent. Um, and just, and I don't mean this in a bad way, uh, but intense practices, um, you know, you're, you're pushing yourself every single practice and not necessarily out of wanting to outdo anybody else because it truly is, uh, it almost sounds corny to say, but a family environment, you know, everybody there wants everybody else to do well, Oh, for sure. but you're pushing yourself because you want to do better, you know, and you see what other people are able to achieve and you just want to do more. And, you know, everybody there is willing to help you achieve that just as much as you're willing to help them. Almost so, like a bit of know, a, a friendly competition, it sounds like, in a way. Very much. And, you know, that's kind of how mine and Cable's relationship started. It was very much that drive to outdo each other, but in a, you know, friendly way of sorts. Well, it really got started when I thought you were moving in in on my spot as the bearded guy in the class. <laughs> and, I mean, let's, let's be fair. We were both moving in on Justin Turnbull's spot as the long-haired, bearded, tattooed guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Fair point, I guess. But, you know, we were definitely competing to be in that spot for a little while. <laughs> and, and then, yeah. weirdly enough, we decided that two big, badass, bearded dudes would probably get a lot further working together. Definitely. It's a lot easier to team up and, you know, kick ass and take names together than try to fight each other and then, you know, kind of go against the world on your own. But it's, it's funny to hear that you guys kind of had that in the beginning because, I mean, anytime you're, you know, the big bearded guy in, in a room or whatever, and then another big bearded guy walks in, it's like, well, wait a minute. What's this What's this guy up to? I, I find even, you know, knowing as many bearded individuals as I do, it, it's a great brotherhood that a lot of people automatically have. But some of them in certain settings, 
do have that competitiveness to them, even just with beards where it's like, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're working in an office and, you know, oh, here comes a new guy. He's got a beard. What the hell's this guy doing? You know, even I, I, even I have it on my level sometimes. Well, you know, my work, someone will come in new with a beard and I'm like, you know, what's this guy up to? What's, what's your deal? You got a beard? What's up? <laughs> As long as you respect, you know, the social cues of, you know, the bigger beard has the right of way. Of course. We're yes. okay. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, you know, kind of bringing it back here to, to, to mean beard for a second. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're not hiding the fact that we've done this interview before. Um, cable last time, I think, brought up the, the greatest point when referencing mean beard. It, it's the first time in a long time that we've kind of looked at something and been given beard envy. Oh yeah, because it's true. We're following that on social media. I've seen some beards. It's like I, you know, I, I'm trying to channel it and have it be beard inspiration rather than beard envy. But I'm not very good at that. <laughs> beard, beard inspiration, if you will. New hashtag. Get that trending. I want that trending as soon as this podcast goes. Beard live. inspiration, folks. You heard it here first. And also the uh... well, well, while we're talking about hashtags and stuff, I mean, we we have to address the elephant in the room here. The, these memes that you've been posting oh, about us yes. for the last week. I mean, I, I do want to see hashtag beard inspiration appear on all of those because uh, although we were both, what, 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 what word would you use here, Cable? I, I don't want to say angry, um, perturbed. What might? Ah, I just I literally was in the process of forming that word in my head as you said it. That's that's a real tag team right there. It, 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 it came to me from somewhere. That that didn't come from me. So you, you channeled that through the phone here. We we were a little perturbed at the, the posts that you're making. I'm, there were a couple of them that were clever. I'll give you that. I mean, C- Cable had one that he really liked, but I'm not gonna lie. The one where I was tagged as also me in the meme. Uh, that I did get a legitimate chuckle out of that, and that did kind of put me, you know, further towards doing this this podcast again because. I mean, you can make me mad, and you can make me mad sometimes, but you can make me laugh too. We're good. What? And then, uh, for, for me, the one that I kind of like because I mean, it, it it wasn't really taking a shot at us, you know. It was it it, it kind of summed up everything. Was you had one? I think you posted it yesterday. The the showing up to a party with your boy, like <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what it is. You know, we we show up and it's a party for us. It's just we enjoy what we get to do to our opponents in the ring. So that, that one there, I didn't take too much of an offense to, but you, uh, you had a few there that were questionable for me. Well, I can, you know, definitely appreciate that. I mean, I, I meant absolutely no offense. It was all just in, in good fun, but I do apologize for, uh, you know, for that, but I, I definitely appreciate you guys seeing the humor in the, the couple of them that I did because, you know, especially that showing up to the party, like, I mean, when I saw you guys come to the ring and when I see you guys do your thing, it's like you're just coming in and you're ready to throw down. Your music's going, you're you're intense. So for me, as much as obviously that was a a lighthearted way of saying, you know, heading to a party, quote unquote, the ring is where you guys work. That is your party. That is your good time. So I think it was kind of had a bit of a a double meaning almost, almost, if you will. No, exactly. And of course, talking about that uh, beard inspiration as well, I want to get take a, just a really, really quick second to give a shout out to uh, an individual who you guys may have actually seen him. His name is uh, Mr. Joe Loving. He is the managing partner of Mean Beard, and he is, uh, you know, one of the guys that really makes it all happen and is one of the best dudes you'll ever meet. And if you want to have some beard envy, you just go search that man. His his uh, Instagram handle is actually Beard Inspiration Twelve, so not quite. Um, the same thing, but uh, definitely that is a hashtag. I think we should we should get going and get trending right now, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this, I right mean, now. I like the guy already. You know what I mean? Great minds thinking alike. I mean, like we Great said, beards thinking alike. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you know, we we mentioned this last time we talked. You know what I mean? Part of the reason that we agreed to do this podcast in the first place was we saw you know your, your handle for the podcast. You know, your your slogan for the podcast is "Hear the Beard." And we're fear the beard, so you know, you you think along similar lines. So we we decided to give you a shot, and then you went and lost the tape. So yeah, it was a uh, you know definitely a very unfortunate thing. And I mean, with the you know that uh, network tag of the hear the beard, 
it was just like a match made in heaven. And again, you know, I am uh, mortified about that that happened. And uh, I, I, I will forever be apologetic about that lost tape. Um, but again, I do appreciate Long you guys it giving me... Out. In, you know, a few years, you know, you're sitting there and you try and cash in on, you know, our notoriety within wrestling by dropping, you know, here's the lost tape that, you know, I lied about and I've always had this whole time. You know, if that's the case, we may have to come and pay you a visit and not in a good way. But, yeah. Well, unless you want to share the royalties when you do it. In which case, then definitely go for it. And then everyone's going to think we were in on it from the start. It'd be almost Money a, be- does- a beard conspiracy. <laughs> A beard spiracy. Beard spiracy. That's it. Yeah, that's that's a much better beard beard spiration and beard spiracy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can I can assure you, gentlemen, that, that uh, unfortunately that that lost tape is and will definitely stay lost. And if, if there was ever any chance in hell of it ever coming out, I would absolutely be uh, you know be sending it to you guys to use at your leisure. There would be no no tomfoolery around here. I I, I have no desire of. You know, you guys showing up at my house anytime soon for anything but a beer. Uh, I have no no desire for that ever to happen or to, you know, hopefully get on your guys' bad side uh, ever again. We would, we would have considered it until we heard what your selection of beer is this late at night. Yeah, again, you know, drinking the, uh, you know, this is a very, it was the, the, the best of a horrible situation I found myself in. And I'm, you know, this is... Uh, just like drinking water. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So I, I do again, hope that you're enjoying, <laughs> enjoying that banquet. But um, well, I'll t- tell you what, if we ever do pay you a visit for the beer, the people bearing the gold will bring the gold standard for beer brewed in golden Colorado with us. That's I would, I would hope and expect nothing less for sure. Only the best for, for the, uh, the gentleman carrying those gold belts right now. But speaking of those belts, I want to kind of just just jump back in here to a little bit about the kind of you guys as a tag team. Would you say that, you know, obviously like you guys had talked a little bit about before about how there was kind of that little bit of maybe friendly competition in the beginning, but then you realized, you know, we can probably accomplish more together than apart. Was it kind of always your guys plan to eventually form tag team? Have you kind of always been fans of tag team wrestling or when did that start for you guys? I mean, I've always been a fan of tag team wrestling. Uh, I won't say necessarily that it, it was my goal to become a tag team wrestler. Um, I, I truly believe that, you know, the best tag teams are, are teams that are kind of formed organically as opposed to put together. Um, so, you know, for me to have considered getting into a tag team, there had to be some sort of a connection that, you know, not not just in the ring, but, you know, from a personal level, you know, it's someone that you're going to be spending a lot of time in a car with, um, you know, in backstage areas with, um, you know, working on moves together and training and so on. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't go into training with the expectation of being a tag team wrestler, but uh, it, it definitely wasn't something that I, I was adverse to. Likewise, I, I didn't, really know exactly what my plan was i was just gonna do training and then figure it out as i went and before i could figure it out uh, i met john and we decided we're gonna be a tag team so i guess it, it figured itself out for me it's almost just like it was meant to happen like you guys have such um you know starting off training in such a you know a short time period within each other and training in the same location and you know being trained by such a you know a, a legendary performer in his own right and also really quickly on that note wasn't he also featured at the performance center a couple times as well he was uh he spent a, a week down there not too long ago as a, as a guest coach definitely i'm sure he was able to you know lend them some <laughs> some skills as far as what he's able to offer you guys with their conditioning and that but as far as um with tag team and that when did you guys have your first official outing as a tag team and then also I, i'm curious about each one of your guys's first matches as we didn't really touch on that before i guess we'll kind of go about it backwards um seeing as you know we each had our singles debut before our tag team um Myself, personally, I debuted uh, in September of 2017. Um, it was 
a uh, little over just uh, about a year after I had started training. Um, you know, I, I thankfully lived a little bit closer to the school, so I was able to, to cram in a lot of additional classes on top of the, the standard, um, very intense uh, training that we, we were both doing. Um, you know, I managed to, to get in there some days during the week and so on. Um, so I kind of got lucky on that front. Uh, I made my debut in August of 2018. So coming up on my, uh, my one year anniversary in the business here in about a month and a bit, uh, I was, uh, training for about two, over two years. Uh, as I stated earlier, I wasn't athletic to start with. So that kind of held me back. And then, you know, the fact that I was commuting (laughs) to and from Montreal three, four times a week. And when the weather got bad and they were, they were closing down the highways and the snowstorms would pick up, you know, I'd have to miss a class here or there, unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond my control. So the combination of those factors made me take, made it take a little bit longer. But uh, I know that as soon as I stepped in that ring for the first time, I was uh, in better shape and better prepared for the extra time that it took me. And, and let, let's be honest here. There, there was also some of... Cable has that self-preservation that I lack. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was willing to, to kind of throw myself into a situation that, you know, going going at it the way I did. I mean, I, I, I feel it certain mornings when I wake up, you know, Cable wa- wanted to make sure that, you know, he was going to last for the long term, whereas I was just like, oh, okay, I got to try this now. You know, Cable looked at it as the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, to evaluate, yeah. do a risk assessment before I tried really anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whereas I was just, you know, as I still am today, kind of, okay, let's do it. Why not? And then, you know, I shatter my ankle on a belly-to-belly suplex. So, you know. It's uh, different strokes and different timelines, but, you know, I think it worked out perfectly to, to line us up together to, to be able to do what we do now. Oh, definitely. I couldn't agree more on that. And just, just really quick on that note. So you had that, obviously, was that from a personal experience you had where you, you shattered your ankle? Have you had any other injuries at all since you've been training? or? Uh, nothing pertaining to training. Uh, all just stupid injuries because as a, we've both said you know i have no regard for my own body <laughs> um, you know i ended up in a situation where you know the i ended up in a belly-to-belly suplex against a gentleman much larger than myself and i traveled much further across the ring than i would have wanted to uh when i came crashing down the first thing that landed was my ankle across the bottom rope and I heard a snap, and I stood up, and I fell back to the floor. Um, so, you know, it, I, I've done that. I've got some knee damage. I've got a bad shoulder. Um, you know, you, you alluded to it earlier with the F word. Uh, you know, it, it's a different four-letter word for those of you that don't know that we're, we're referring to. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's not at all. Um, you know, I've been at this a little under two years now, and, you know, I can't count the injuries on one hand anymore. But, uh, you know, we, we do it because we love it, and it, it'll it take a lot more than a, a fractured ankle to stop me because I wrestled on it the very next weekend. So, and I never took any time off. So Yeah, it's it's just not a T-shirt that you wear, <laughs> the, uh, the genuine badass, ladies and gentlemen. That's actually... He does enable he you know he does embody that <laughs> and we will not stop until you are you know his opponent is incapacitated. And I mean the only the only reason Cable doesn't have it on his shirt is because it would be redundant to have it on both of ours. Of course, yeah. So <laughs> he's definitely equally just as equally as badass. <laughs> and thankfully, you know, just to answer you know the question that brought us here, uh, knock on wood. Fortunately, I you know I have some bangs and bruises here and there some mysterious cuts i tend to hurt myself in really stupid ways during wrestling but no real injuries so hopefully that streak keeps running yeah definitely hopefully so it's something that a lot of people you know we we've heard you know people talk about it you know the we is very 
proactive on making sure people, you know, you know, don't try this at home and so on and so forth. Absolutely do not you try know, this at home. No. If you're not trained, don't do it. <laughs> Absolutely and, not. And, you know, it, it, don't try it at home. Don't try it at your friend's house. Don't try it at school. Don't, don't try it anywhere. You know, if you want to do it, go up and get trained because – as, as a stupid teenager, I would play wrestle with my friends, and of I ended course. up getting power bombed on the back of my head on a tree root. Ooh. And uh, I can still feel the bump on the back of my skull to this day. So please, anybody listening, do not try this anywhere without getting trained first. No, it's never worth it. That that definitely must have been a nasty hit. Oh, <laughs> Thank, thankfully where it happened was at a friend's house because you know that was when i was a stupid young teenager going you know hey it's not my house um thankfully it happened at my friend's house and his mom was a nurse okay. so within a matter of seconds i was able to get qualified medical attention um and you know had no long-lasting ill issues um, you know, she was able to clean it up, stitch me up and everything. So, uh, and luckily no concussion. Um, so, but you know, I was lucky. So there are plenty of people that aren't. And, uh, again, listen to them when they tell you, don't try this at home. Definitely. And concussions are nothing to, uh, to joke about either. That's something that has been a big, very big talk lately, even the last few years in the wrestling business, you know, where, you know, and, and, in, and in most contact sports, you know, the whole concussion issue and, you know, it it gets scary very quickly when you, as someone who has experienced concussions before from just stupid situations, it's scary when you, you know, you're sitting and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what's that ringing? What's this? Like, why do I see stars? It's a, it's a terrifying thing, the situation to find yourself in. But as far as getting back to, before we got on this little injury tangent here, we were talking about your guys' first matchup. And I'm, I'm curious, as far as your guys' first full-on legitimate tag team matchup, who were your opponents? And kind of walk me through that first matchup. Um, I'll, I'll give the... The, the name, the date, and everything like that, and I'll let Cable kind of tell the story because I think from his perspective it was uh, a, a little bit more entertaining than mine. Uh, we we had our first match uh, October 20th of 2018. Um, so, you know, very shortly after Cable had had his debut, um, it was for Bar and Championship Wrestling where we're now the tag team champion. Um, and we faced off against uh, the Gary A. Ring. Um, Jason Gray and Nori, um, two veterans uh, in Quebec wrestling. Uh, I don't know how long they've been wrestling. I apologize, but they've been wrestling for a few years uh, for sure. Um, you know, an established tag team. They work well together. Um, and yeah, that was our first match. But uh, I, I think it was a little bit, a, a little bit more of an awkward situation for Cable. Yeah, that being a. Uh... My first time ever in tag team competition. I know John had had a couple of uh, one-off tag matches here and there prior to that, but uh, that was my first time in a tag match, and it was a little bit nerve-wracking even before it started because we arrived to the venue at a, at a reasonable time, and building up into showtime, our opponents still hadn't arrived, so we were worried that you know we were going to f- win our first tag match by default, which wasn't quite what we were looking for. And then I mean, we'll, we, we'll we'll take it, you know, we'll take a win by any course. means necessary. But yeah, yeah. ideally, but, not the way to start. You want to get in there, and you want to, you know, you want to hurt somebody. Let's be honest. That's wanna, you want to get in well, there and hurt, kick some ass. Yes, hurt, make a name for ourselves, kick ass, and show off all of the the moves that we had been working on up to that point. You know, it was our big tag team debut, and we didn't want the fire taken out from under us before we even got started. <laughs> but we got our, our opponents did show up, and we got out there. And I was trying to do my best to listen from, uh, while I was not the legal man, trying to figure out what, you know, our opponents were, were planning as they were communicating with each other. But they realized we got out there. They didn't even speak the same language as us, which kind of makes sense because we were wrestling in the South Shore area of Montreal uh, that they would be speaking French, but I don't speak a word of French. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a bizarre experience for me as well. So you're trying and, to... And not, even, not even speaking French, though. They're, they're, they're speaking that... The, the Montreal French, you know what I mean? Where it's like they're 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 running one word into the next, and I mean, I, I speak a little bit of French, and even I was lost, so I, I felt bad for Cable that night. Uh, well, for sure, you're you're trying to at least, you know, when you're 
I would imagine when you're in the ring and you know your opponents are kind of like you know oh get him in this headlock or whatever like they're they're trying to almost um uh I guess egg on a little bit the, their partner and you can go okay like you know he's gonna do that so you can do this or whatever and we can reverse that or or whatever you're doing and I'm not gonna try and sit here and <laughs> act like I know what you guys are doing you're, you're pretty close but um I, I would imagine that that would be just a completely I've been in a situation before where someone has come up to me and started yelling at me in French and it's it's a terrifying situation when it's like buddy I have no idea what you're saying so that is uh, definitely would be a very uh, freaky situation to find yourself in. But despite that, we got the job done, and we picked up our first ever tag team wrestling win. Well, of course. No surprises there as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, I always like to point out. I mean, not only do I like to point out because it makes me might maybe sound like I'm bragging a little bit, but I find it interesting that, you know, our first tag team match we won, my my first singles match, I won, and uh, my first Abel? singles match, I won too. I'm so seeing a pattern. I, I mean, there. I'm starting to notice a trend there. There's a trend. You guys get in the ring, wow. you win. That's just what's not to understand. <laughs> you have to ask simple questions about English, but you figured out statistics pretty quickly. I'm impressed. Yeah, you know, sometimes I, you know, sometimes my brain works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> That's just uh, I have to chuckle at myself about that. But he's you, a numbers guy, you know. Yeah, of course, for sure. But you you guys were talking a little bit about, you know, how you wanted to, you were worried about your opponents not showing up and you getting that, you know, that win by default, which of course, like you said, you'll take it, you know, wins a win, you know, history is written by the winners, ladies and gentlemen. But um, as far as you guys wanted to make sure that you could, you know, show off these moves that you've been perfecting that you wanted to, you know, inflict onto your opponent. Walk me through just a little bit about kind of, what you guys aim to do when you walk into a match, how are you, do you have any kind of basic tactics that you can walk us through as far as what you want to do to win a match and how you beat your opponents? Inflict pain. <laughs> it's about as simple as it gets. <laughs> to elaborate on that for those listening at home, <laughs> anything and everything that is necessary to inflict pain. I mean, we, we've had times where Cable has, literally used me for lack of better terms as a weapon. You know, I mean, if if I have to get hurt in the process of hurting my opponents, then so be it. It at the end of the day, it's gonna hurt them more than it's gonna hurt me. And inflict pain is basically what it comes down to. Um whether that be biting an opponent or driving his head into the mat or putting him through a table or body slamming him on grapes you know it's whatever is necessary to get the win oh for sure whatever needs to happen you know at the end of the day like i said earlier it, no one remembers the losers no one or how you won you know it doesn't matter if you know oh, they cheated you know what I, i'm the i'm of the thought process that sometimes as much as i may not agree with you know quote-unquote underhanded tactics at the end of the day folks you know, it it's the winners that matter. Look, let's be honest. Look, this is a simple matter. If we cheated, the ref would have seen it, and we of would course. have gotten disqualified. But since we were not disqualified, we did not cheat. Of course. I, I'm sure that everybody, even the most you know simple-minded people like myself, can absolutely understand that. But, you know, talking about your hey, tactics. If, and, if you understood it, I'm sure most of the listeners will understand it because, you know. As we've established, you know, I'm uh, you, you can't understand three words, but you can follow this. So we're good. For sure. And that's something that I'm sure everyone can, you know, can appreciate. Um, and thank you for pointing that out again, by the way. But uh, you guys have talked a little bit about, you know, your tactics and that. And, and I wanted to kind of put a bit of a highlight on this because it is such a spectacular sequence. I, I kind of wanted to really quickly just touch on it. The maneuver, or I guess we'll call it a sequence that you guys do to finish off your opponents. Cable, you hit what is referred to, I believe, as a flatliner, which is you literally driving with your own weight and your opponent's weight, their face, into the mat, while Kane, Kane, you come off the top rope and hit a wicked splash that, you know, you've talked a lot tonight about, or today, excuse me, about you, you know, doing whatever is necessary to inflict pain on your opponent. And, I mean, just looking at that, you know, sequence on its own, that is you guys literally 
inflicting as much pain and impact on your opponents as possible. Before I let Cable, because Cable, you know, does kind of start off this sequence, you know, so I'll let him kind of go into it. But just so you know, you know, yeah, we do use the, the flatliner splash combo, but that's not necessarily the way we finish all our matches, you know. It's, it, it's a fun one. It's one that we both enjoy doing. But let it not be assumed that that's the only way that we'll try and end a match. You know, whatever, again, is necessary, we will do. But I'll let, I'll let Cable talk about the flatliner part because as beautiful as it is for me to watch, I'm sure it's even more fun for him to do. Yeah, I hit that flyliner. I drive them with, all, with their own body weight and my body weight down into the mat. It disorients them. They have no chance of protecting themselves from the splash. Now, don't get me wrong here. I could just pin them after the flyliner. Oh, for sure. But that's not enough fun for me. And, I mean, then, you know, on top of that, you got, depending how many beers I've had that day, you know, 205, 210 pounds, jumping, you know, six, seven feet in the air landing with all my body weight onto my opponent, driving the air out of his body. The only thing he's focused on at that point is trying to catch his breath. He's had his head smashed into the ground. He doesn't know where he is anymore. He's had the wind knocked out of him. You think he's worried about trying to get his shoulders off the mat? He's just trying not to pass out and choke and, you know, not be able to breathe. So at the end of the day, it's a fun little exercise in inflicting pain on our opponents, but I mean, we, we've pulled off many other moves that uh, have entered our opponents just as luxuriously. So, John actually knocked a guy out with a forearm once. That was how we won one of our matches. I did. That's nothing that a surprise to me. The no, I mean, it, to, to, to be fair, I mean, I don't remember much of the end of that match neither, but you know, the forearm happened. I ended up on top of him, and one, two, three, there was a pin. I had so, chased our other opponent to the back at that time because he was running away like the coward he was, so I didn't quite see it. But At the know. end of the day, the ref was lifting my hand in the air, and it was our music playing, and we got a W in the record book. So, And again, that's all people really remember, let's be honest. It's just any W. That was a number one contenders match, and we went on to fight for the tag team championships the following month. That's true. Which then, of course, you guys won. Well, I, you know, I, I would love to tell you that, but there was some crooked officiating. Oh, geez, okay. And there was some circumstances beyond our control that prevented us from getting that W. But unfortunately, as we were discussing, that doesn't get written down in the history books. Of course, Because yeah. the history books are written by the ones that did the shenanigans. Well, you would think that in that kind of a situation, I mean, I would personally petition, you know, to let it be known that, you know, there should be an asterisk there because if... We, yeah. we we tried, but there was a bit of a language barrier because you know they're they're French and from a small town. Okay. So, <laughs> like are. yourself, they didn't have a great grasp on the English language. Sure, of course, yeah. Our attorney submitted the forms in trip. We could. We're uh, we're still awaiting our appeal date, but you know we're not going to let this one down. Oh, for sure, as you shouldn't. And I mean, you know, definitely. Uh... We'll keep everyone posting on that if we get any new information. But you know, speaking a little bit about matches and that. Run me through kind of some of your guys' other career highlights and other memorable matches that you guys have had in your career at this point. Uh, I mean, I, I had a few on my, my, my singles run there before Cable and I kind of got together. Um, you know, I, I remember one where I won a Money in the Bank match or, you know, what what they call in the WWE a Money in the Bank match. Uh, but basically, I won a ladder match giving me a, a title shot of my choosing. Uh, and then later on that night, I decided to cash in on a guy who had just finished uh, a strap match. So, uh, you know, my that was actually my second attempt at winning a title. And the match itself lasted seven seconds. And that guy was champion for a grand total of one minute, three seconds. So seeing, seeing the look of shock on some of the fans' faces when I came right back out in the very next match, and uh, captured that title was definitely fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as my singles career, that was definitely the, the most fun I've had. And as a tag team, we competed for and obviously won the inaugural BCW Tag Team Champions. We are the reigning and defending champions who have conquered everyone who has rose to the challenge since we have captured those belts. 
But we also challenged for, as mentioned previously, the GEW Valley Field Dubs that should have been ours and may still be ours before the story is over. And on top of that, we competed in the first and only ever Texas Blood Money match. Whoa. Oh, what was that? I just that went for that match. Oh, geez, I've, I've already said too much. Uh, look, for legal reasons, we're, we're not supposed to get too far into that. Okay. But uh, along a similar vein, I wrestled a bear once. Can't tell you that story either. Really? Oh, Jesus. That is insane. And I mean, the, not only was he a bear, and, and again, I'm, I'm treading lightly here because we, we don't want to get in trouble with the, the, the legalities of things. But not only was he a bear, not only was he a Russian bear, he was a Soviet bear. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's how long that bear had been doing this. And Cable had to fight him. Oof. Well, I mean, I would love to hear more of that story, but obviously, of course, we, uh, you know, for legal reasons, you guys aren't able to get into it. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm glad you're at least okay, Cable. That would be definitely a very intense experience to go through that you actually wrestled a bear once. Well, you know, let me tell you, it was a life-changing experience and uh, not one that I would wish on everybody, but I believe that if you can survive it, it will make you a stronger person. So if you ever see a bear and you're feeling lucky, go at it. (laughs) I'd also be remiss to, to, you know, pass up on the fact that you just mentioned the name of a cool heavy metal band. Oh, You know, I wrestled there once. You know, well, what more can you say? I mean, it's a band. Cable wrestled the bear once. I mean, hey, it, it almost writes itself. I mean, if, um, if I re- for, for anybody that's interested in seeing amazing wrestling like that, um, you know, watching a man wrestle a Soviet bear. When when do you get to see that? Uh, just you know, go on Facebook, uh, Mystery Wrestling. Uh, it's in Gatno, I believe. Cable, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gatno. And uh, follow them on Facebook. Um, you know they, they they have events regularly. You, you buy your ticket. You show up. You don't know who's going to wrestle who. You don't know who's going to be on the card. Uh, even us as wrestlers, you know, we sometimes don't find out what's going on until we get out in the ring. Uh, which is what happened to Cable with the Bear, and happened to Cable and us once when we got out to the ring together, which uh, was not a fun experience. But what happened? You, they ended up making you guys fight each other? Yeah, again, we can't get into it, but Cable? They did. They uh, they insisted that there was no other tag teams in the back, which I know to be a lie. And such uh, a result made that, meant that we had to fight each other. <clears throat> and, uh, geez, I, just, I, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I feel like... You know, Hang on, they, I, I, I think I think I found a good way that we can get around it without legalities. All right, we 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 were forced to face each other in a match in which the loser lost something that was very precious to him. And without you, naming anything, it starts with B and rhymes with feared. Oh my goodness! I can. So we 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 found that out when we were standing in the ring. So. Well, that's just, that seems a little uh, a little fishy to me that they would put you guys in that kind of a situation. But, I mean, obviously, since you were both keeping your beards, you kind of found a way to, uh, you know, to get around that. We found a loophole. I, mean, I, I, just, I just wish that we could tell you what it was. But, you know, again, you, you want to see these, these crazy matches, these amazing matchups that you won't see anywhere else because I can guarantee you you're not going to see – John Cahan versus Alexander Cable anytime other than at Mystery Wrestling. So follow them on Facebook, you know, give them a like, pay attention, and come out to one of their shows. It's uh, it's a unique experience, to say the least. Oh, definitely. Big shout-outs to them. So as far as you guys right now, as we're kind of getting ready to, to wind down here today, um, and again, thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, agreeing again to come on the show for a second time after the the mishaps, I very much do appreciate that. Um, as far as the fact that you guys are, of course, the reigning and defending BCW Tag Team Champions, um, is there kind of anything else that you guys want to accomplish in the immediate future? Kind of what's next for Kane and Cable? What's next is to keep doing what we've been doing. Show up anywhere, 
any time, on any amount of notice to fight anybody and kick ass. I know. I'll, I'll keep it simple for you once again. This time it's only two words, and I've said it before, inflicting pain. So, as, as Cable said, anytime, anywhere, you know, we're, we're looking to wrestle as many places as we can, as many different people as we can, and just keep adding gold around our waists. So, if, if you're holding a title somewhere or you're a, a heavy contender for a tag title in any federation, just watch your back. They're coming, folks. They're ki- t- kicking ass and taking names for damn sure. For sure. So last last couple questions I have here for you guys. Um, do you have just, it's kind of a, you know, I do a lot of musician interviews, so I always like to ask about like a, maybe a favorite show that someone has played or a favorite song or something of that. So obviously this is the first time I've had any kind of pro wrestlers on the show. Do you guys have a favorite matchup that you've ever seen? And then kind of the flip side of that, a favorite match that you guys were a part of? Well, for me, my favorite match that I ever seen have ever seen for a very long time was uh, it was back, I believe, Armageddon, where uh, Jeff Hardy finally won the WWE Championship over Triple H and uh, Edge. That that match would be the one I would go back and watch a lot. That was the, really when I was younger. That was the only match I ever rewatched when I was just a fan because that was such a, a huge moment for me as a wrestling fan that I never really left. Definitely a great moment for sure, and a great matchup. As far as the match I've been in, I mean, we've been in some great ones. We've had some some wars with the Shudokan fight team. We've uh, I've mixed up with a couple of really fun singles competitors. There's a great tag division growing in in Boronwa BCW. But uh, I think, and shout outs to the honorary honorable mention to the match where uh, we ended up winning the tag titles. But I think my my favorite match that I've been a part of was uh, a month prior to that at BCW. We had done a, a three stages of hell match versus the Dad Bot Squad. And that was just all kinds of carnage and mayhem, and I ended up getting handcuffed to the ropes, and John went through a door, and I think just being that match, you know, as a competitor was fun and uh, a, a battle, and we got to do a lot of what we do best. And then watching it back, I was I enjoyed it as well. So that, for me, is probably the favorite match I've ever been in. And, I mean, there's... They Not only did they, like, handcuff him to the ropes, which was just absolutely uncalled for. Real um, police handcuffs, too. Yeah. Well, you know, none, none of these, you know, fake stuff that you use in the bedroom with your girlfriend or boyfriend. You know, I don't want to judge anybody's proclivities here. Uh, you know, no pink fuzzy handcuffs or anything like that. Like, legit police handcuffs. You know, we, we were contemplating having to cut the ropes uh, in half just to get him out. But luckily there was a police officer in the crowd who was able to let him out. Um, not only did they do that, they got kids involved. They had kids hitting us with rolls of Christmas wrapping paper oh, right. while they held us in place. Now, have you ever that is by a roll of Christmas wrapping paper. I actually it have. It's not pleasant. <laughs> not, 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 not the cardboard tube that, you know, your parents let you play with when you're a kid. It was still wrapped with Christmas wrapping paper. So you're getting hit and you're getting paper cuts and all of that. And it's little kids who are just absolutely unruly and, you know, should be restrained when at a wrestling show. But all of that cheating and they managed to pull out the win. But when push came to shove the next month, we beat them and the three skulls club, not two opponents, not four, but five opponents to walk away with the BCW Tag Team Championship. So, you know, they, they can do whatever they want, and getting their kids involved and this and that, and making their kids feel like they're stars. But at the end of the day, we have the gold. So, um, And as far as me as, you know, a fan, um, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, being at WrestleMania 18, um, I, I'd have to say, you know, the, the Rock and Hogan live, um, you know, despite the fact that it might not have been the greatest wrestling match ever, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of great moves done in the match, but, you know, just such a, a historic moment in wrestling history. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I'm not ashamed to say, you know, I was one of those people sitting there freaking out that, you know, Hulk Hogan was back in Toronto. So 
it was uh, definitely uh, a fun night as a fan that uh, I'm sure will be hard to top. Oh, for sure. A huge <laughs> matchup that, you know, no matter who you are and whatever you may think of, you know, anything to do with <laughs> wrestling, when you get two of the biggest stars in the history of the business in the ring together, I mean, it was just a... Uh, the electricity that was, I could have only imagined that was in that building that, I mean, even for me watching it back, you know, a couple of years later, obviously the electricity, even just coming through the TV was just unmatched. So before I ask uh, the last little bit here about some actually upcoming uh, bookings you guys have, where can the good people find you on social media if they want to give you guys a follow? Well, I'm earlier in the alphabet, so I guess I'll start. You can find me at alexandercable.tc on both Instagram and Facebook. I'm trying to uh, figure out Twitter, so uh, there'll probably be a post on my Facebook or my Instagram once the Twitter goes live. Uh, for me, it's johnkayan.tc on both uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, J-O-N-C-A-Y-E-N for uh, those of you like TJ who aren't great with spelling. Yes. Um, as far as uh, Twitter and stuff like that, I stay away because in case you haven't realized, I like to talk. And uh, I, I heard something about they're at 288 characters now, but that still isn't enough for me. So uh, your your best bet if you want to keep up to date with my current news, where I'm going to be is Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram as well, but Facebook is where you'll get the most of my information. Definitely. Well, speaking of information, John, you actually have a, uh, a, a great title matchup coming up on uh, July 14th, which is uh, this Sunday, folks, as you're hearing this, um, for uh, Ontario Championship Wrestling uh, that is happening in Toronto against Steve Brown for the CWO Championship. Tell me a little bit about that match. Uh, yeah, Championship Wrestling from Ontario in Etobicoke uh, at the Rock Pile at 5555 Dundas Street West. I believe, uh, don't hold me on that, but I believe it's Dundas Street West, uh, Dundas Street and the 427 in Toronto for all of you out there. Um, I faced Steve Brown before. Um, I, I mentioned it briefly the last time that we recorded this. Uh, I have a nice little shrine on my wall that I like to call my wall of pain. Um, and it's various tools, I guess you could say, that my opponents have used against me. You know, I've got a garbage can up there, pieces of a table that I went through, some cookie sheets, some kendo sticks, some steel chairs, etc. Um, one of those items that is up there is a steel chair that is folded in a very peculiar way, thanks to Steve Brown. Um, the last time we faced for the CWO title, I was unsuccessful. Uh, Steve Brown is a very large man. Um, he goes by the name of Bone Crusher, and uh, let me let me say he lives up to that name. Um, but you know, I've stepped in the ring with him once before, so I know what I'm getting into now. Um, and it'll it'll definitely be a, a, a different outcome, and I'll be looking to add a third title around my waist. So uh, yeah, this Sunday I believe it starts. Uh, double check it on Championship Wrestling from Ontario, people. Uh, but I believe it starts at uh, two o'clock. Well, hold up now. Hold up. You okay. can't just talk. You can't just do that to me. You're talking about John's big match on Sunday, and of course, I want to see my tag team partner go off and win a tag team title, uh, single title rather, because he can do both. We can do both. But before that happens, we have a tag team match on Saturday. Of course, yes. That is uh, for Seaway uh, Valley Wrestling on a, it was Saturday, July 13th. I definitely did not mean to uh, leave you out there, Cable. I apologize. That's, um, of course, against uh, Double Dragon. And um, now you, I know you guys have tangled with them before. Kind of what, what are your plans kind of coming into this matchup? Look, I, I don't think we can say it any different than we have been for the past hour. Every time we step into that ring, we're looking to inflict pain and kick ass, and the Double Dragon are no exception. We have tangled with them before, and something tells me this won't be the last time either. But I promise you, if anybody's going in a lake this time, it's not going to be us. Oh, you see, I, I, I like to try and put that out of my mind. But the fact of the matter is, yes, the last time we faced in Kingston, wrestling in a park, that Blue Dragon at Classic decided that he was going to throw me into Lake Ontario. 
spent a couple of days off on the shelf after that, you know, got a nice little infection from that disgusting, filthy water from that disgusting, filthy city called Kingston. Got some uh, nice E. coli infection, which, you know, they failed to warn us about. You know, we shouldn't have even been out there in the first place. But the fact of the matter is, this Saturday, Pat, Eddie, you guys have to step across the ring from John Cahan and Alexander Cable. And there's no body of water around for you to throw us into this time. There's nowhere for you guys to run. So the fact of the matter is, this Saturday, Seaway Valley Wrestling, the good fight. It will be a good fight, good and violent. And you guys will learn, just like every single other person that we have stepped across the ring from, that you have to do three words that apparently TJ can't understand, and that is fear the beard. Okay. Whew. <laughs> so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. And uh, if for some reason Double Dragon is hearing this right now, gentlemen, I hope you are ready for an absolute fight because Kane and Cable seem like they're just getting ready to run right through you guys. So, best of luck with your match on Saturday. And, of course, best of luck as well to the guys and as well to John on his matchup on Sunday. Definitely am looking forward to hearing how that all goes. And I hope that you had a good time today on the show. Hope that you enjoyed my chat with Kane and Cable. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like, comment, let me know what you thought of the episode, maybe some things that you would like to ask the guys. I'll be sure to pass those questions along. Uh, be sure as well to give them a follow on social media. Like they mentioned, they do have Instagram and Facebook. And I guess as well, uh, Cable is working on Twitter as well. Uh, while you're there, be sure to drop a like, follow, subscribe, whatever for your boy, the hottest show. I do seriously appreciate that. We have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We as well are on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, PodCoin, Apple Podcasts, uh, what else am I trying to think of here? There's tons of different podcast apps. I am one of the most successful podcasts in the world. I, I firmly believe that, and I do stand behind that. I try to make sure that no matter who you are, you're able to be entertained. And that is my number one goal here on the show. So if you did enjoy this episode and this is maybe your first time listening to the show, be sure to go back and check out some of my other content. I have a lot of great stuff. If you did enjoy kind of the more wrestling side of things, check out my past chats with Jan Murphy, who is the uh, the CEO and co-founder of Chinlock Wrestling. We have a lot of fun with that. And you're definitely going to see some more wrestlers coming on the show. I have uh, two for sure that I have spoken with already that I'm very excited to have them on. And I'll keep you guys posted on that. And it's cool. There's there's some cool stuff happening right now in my life, guys, and I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm not going to go go into anything more than that right now today, but, uh, you know, I definitely will keep you guys posted as time goes on. Again, thank you guys so very much for the support. It's seriously appreciated. If you are looking to support me, maybe going that extra mile is absolutely optional, but you can go on patreon.com forward slash the hardest show. Go on there and join my Patreon community. And what Patreon is, basically, you have the option for a monthly subscription fee of either $1, $5, or $10, uh, which, of course, all have different levels of, you know, pledges that you get or rewards that you get, I should say, for joining those pledge levels. I will give you content that you're not going to find anywhere else, whether it's live streams or special podcasts. Some of them will even get you special merchandise once it becomes available. What I'm really looking to do is grow this show. And unfortunately, to grow this show more at this point in my uh, my podcasting career, I need to... <laughs> Uh, make a certain make a little money at this and you know the next step for that is things like patreon so it is absolutely optional i am thrilled with where i'm at in in my my podcasting career right now i love where i'm at i love the content i'm doing but for me to again take that next step that is just the reality I'm in. And you know what? If that next step doesn't happen, that's perfectly fine because I love where I'm at and I love to just entertain you guys. That is the number one reason why I'm doing this. And someone asked me the other day, why should I support you? And that was a very fair question. And you know what? My answer to that is really simple, folks. Dedication. Because even though last week we had issues with the show, I still went out of my way to crawl through the last 218 episodes, find not one, but two great hour-long episodes that were, were full of entertainment, 
clean them up, still do an intro and outro, spice it all together and throw it up for you guys to listen to. Even though literally I did that, I had like half an hour to do that. And I still made it happen because entertaining you guys is something that I am thoroughly passionate about and it is fun for me and I love to do it. So thank you guys so very much for listening in last week and also this week. It means the world to me. Even just hitting that subscribe button and then pressing play every week, guys. It helps me so, so much. So thank you very much again for that. I'm just rambling on so i'm going to sign off here and i'll catch you next time on the harder show take it easy guys yeah.